Hi, and welcome to The Anxiety MD, a channel I created to give you expert tips and strategies to help you deal with anxiety. My name is Dr. Russ Kennedy, and I'm an anxiety expert because I'm an anxiety doctor and an anxiety patient. And today, in this video, I want to talk about control and how we worriers need so badly to feel that we're in control and how control actually creates more anxiety than it helps. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Often in my practice, my patients, my anxiety patients, would come in and they say, Dr. Kennedy, I feel so out of control with my anxiety. I'm completely out of control. And often that's because their thoughts were completely out of control. They had no way of bringing themselves back into the present moment and the grounding of their body. And of course they felt out of control. And on some level it probably reflected how they felt as children. But in any event, we worriers especially have this need, this compulsion to try and control things because we believe on some deep, dark, unconscious level that control will keep us safe. But the seeking of control actually makes us more unsafe. And I'll give you a story from my own life. We used to live about five blocks away from the hospital when I was young. And my mother would often work the 3 to 11 shift. And she would get off at 11 p.m. And usually she'd be home by 5 after 11. Well, if she wasn't home by 7 minutes after 11, I would start to worry. And if she wasn't home by 10 minutes after 11, I would be... She's been hit by a car. There's all sorts of catastrophes that would have happened. And then I hear her key in the door and everything's fine. So what was I doing before I got that hit that everything was okay? I was worrying. So in a way, we get conditioned to worry. If we're the sensitive type and we're the type that's prone to anxiety, we worry because on some deep, dark, emotional, unconscious level, we believe that that worry does something. And the worst part about that is that now we're afraid not to worry. If we don't worry because worry does something in the unconscious mind, worry is actually protective or productive, if we don't do it, now we're opening ourselves up for a whole bunch of problems. So in trying to control a situation, we make ourselves worse. Worry is something we do to give us the illusion of control, a false feeling that we're in control. If we worry about something, the unconscious mind believes that we're actually doing something about it, even though consciously we know that's not the case. But there is this sense that if we worry about something, because we've been perhaps worried about stuff in the past, and it's actually turned out to be fine, we make the unconscious and incorrect assumption that worry was actually protective and now we're afraid not to do it. Because we're hooked into that necessary action of worry to feel in control, and control is an illusion, we're in a cycle that we can't get out of. The only way of winning that game is not to play it. Have you ever been one of those carnival midways where you throw a plastic circle on top of a Coke bottle or try and sew a softball into a a milk carton. You can't win those games. The only way to win those games is to not play them. And the only way to win the control game is to not play it. So how do you not play the control game? First of all, you realize, I'm worrying. What am I trying to control with this worry? Is this possible? Because on some level, if you're worried about failing a course and you study harder, well, that worry does provide some sense of relief. But in general, we worry about stuff that we have no control over. So if you're trying to control something that you have no control over, like the results of a medical test or whether or not someone's going to come home on time or another person's behavior for that matter, if your sense of safety is going to depend on that sense of control that you don't have any control over, you are setting yourself up for a bottomless pit of falling into uncontrollable anxiety because anxiety feeds on things that aren't known. And if you try to make what's not known known, 
by using a sense of control, and that's what worry partially is, of course you're going to feel like you're falling out of control because you're trying to control something that you have no control over. Now, what do you have control over? You have control over your attitude towards your worry. You can take your worry and say, okay, what am I worried about? And if there's something, can I do something about this worry? And if there's something you can do about it, like if you're worried about failing an exam or something like that, you can study harder, then go ahead and do that. That'll give you a sense of control. But if you're worried about the results of some sort of medical test, all the worrying in the world isn't going to change the result that's going to happen. Although magically in your mind, you may believe that worry is giving you some sense of control. But what it's doing, like with thinking, it's seducing you into a dead end. It's seducing you into a pattern of thinking that just creates more worry. So what can you do about it? Well, the first thing you can do is decide if I can't control this situation, I'm going to just sit in acceptance. And it's hard to sit in acceptance when you're used to worrying. So that's another reason to get into your body, to connect with yourself, to connect your mind and body together. Because when your mind and body get connected, you establish this grounded sense of feeling in your body. And when you have that grounded sense of feeling, all the options open to you. So before, when you were in your survival brain and your only option was to worry, now that you've grounded into your body, say done some breathing exercises or done something to connect your mind and body together, these other options open to you and other options are acceptance. Just accept what is happening without resistance. Most of anxiety thrives on resistance. And as soon as you accept the situation, whatever it is, that resistance is gone. And because resistance is such a huge player in anxiety, when you lose resistance, that anxiety loses a ton of its force. And then once you've moved into acceptance and been grounded in that, then you have another choice. You have a choice of moving into faith and just understanding that things will have a habit of turning out okay. And they have in the past, not because I've worried, but in spite of it. Faith is something that you can draw on when your mind and your body are connected. When your mind and body aren't connected, when you're in alarm, when you're in anxiety, you back in survival brain and all you can see is fear. All you can see is worry. And you can't blame yourself for falling into worry because that's your natural go-to place. So when you ground yourself in breath or movement or breath and movement together, then the other possibilities of acceptance and faith open up to you. So in summary, control is an illusion. Trying to control something that's uncontrollable is a complete recipe for anxiety. It's a complete recipe for knocking yourself completely out of control. Now, if you can see that you're in that, and you choose to connect in your mind and your body back together, then the other options of acceptance and faith open up to you and that becomes the new normal. So you're not so seduced by worry anymore because you've seen that acceptance and faith actually work much better than worry. And if your goal is to control things, to feel safe, you can control your attitude of acceptance. You can control your attitude of faith. What you can't control is things that are outside of your control. So the trick is realizing what you can control, what you can't control. And if you're worried about something you can't control, move into acceptance, move into faith. And the only way to get there is to first ground yourself in your body. So if this makes sense to you, please leave me some comments in the message below. If it doesn't make sense to you, leave me some comments there as well. Please remember to subscribe. Please share this video with your friends or your family or anyone that you know suffers from anxiety. And until next time, this is the Anxiety MD, Dr. Russ Kennedy, telling you don't believe everything you think.